studio. Today we're going to be working on the Red Cat Monte Carlo and we're basically going to convert it from a hydraulic car into an airbag car. And the reason for this um, is inspired by these two sixers, you know, basically being not compatible with a hydraulic low rider. They don't, not only do they look wrong, they, they don't function right as well. So, and getting something that's just a little bit more appropriate for this, I decided to go to just a very simple bag setup where the car goes up to ride height and drops down into a park position. We're just basically going to change the way that it works by limiting the travel of the servo so that it can't move up and down quite as much. Um, we're also going to tie the servos together so that each functions with just one switch. So it'll raise the whole front of the car or lower. So let's check it out. Take a look at what's going on underneath the car right now. As I was building a hopping low rider out of this, uh, first thing I did was change out these front servos to these power hobbies. Uh, they do work pretty well. They're not the best ones you can get, but they're inexpensive and they do the trick. This car does hop pretty well. And then I also have changed out the shocks. You can see I've got these taller shocks in the rear. And then in the front here, I've also got some aluminum shocks. Battery to the rear, and I've also upgraded to an XT60. Uh, connector so I can use a 3S lipo with adding these weights. These are from a 64, you know, up in the rear and three wheel and all the stuff that it does. only so much room that you can have uh, for the wheel to tuck up into the car and I want to get the car down on the ground as much as I can uh, and you can see like with a factory wheel totally just sit right on the ground so just not the same kind of clearance area and this wheel also hits up in here in the fender as well so this is about as low as you're gonna be able to get you know, before I disconnect all these horns and make the car just flop around I need to take some measurements and make sure I know where I'm at. So now that I've got this turned on and uh, set at ride height, what I want to do is just take a measurement between here and the table. And that way I can record that. We are at 26 millimeters in the front. 23 millimeters in the rear. Okay, so we're gonna write those both down. I just want to point out that these uh, Power Hobby servos uh, chatter. They make noise uh, regardless of them being in the correct position or not. But you're going to hear these chattering a little bit in this video, and um, that's just to be expected out of those particular servos. Okay, so I'm limiting the travel down on these front servos on the endpoints. I put channels three through six all at 20%, both up and down position, and basically that just limits the travel. Of, of what it's doing. Instead of the car going down like we want it to, it's going up. So what we need to do also is go back to reverse, reverse channels three through six. Everything needs to be reversed because it's all working backwards. So we're gonna reverse that one, reverse that one, reverse that one, and reverse that one. And we're gonna save it. Okay, now we get out of here. Now, when you raise it up, the car goes down. This is how I want mine to function. I want it to be down and functioning normal in the down position of the ride height. And then I want it to drop down. Okay, so the car is at ride height. It's, it's down all the way. I've adjusted the endpoints so it's in this weird position to limit the travel. So what we're going to do at this point is remove this rear servo horn and reposition it so the car is in the correct position. So I'm going to get this ready to be attached once I get this up to 26 millimeters, which I'm just going to kind of eyeball. I think it's roughly here. It's still definitely a little bit low. Uh, no big deal. 
Just keep it going. Okay, so that's pretty close. It's maybe a little bit high. We can, again, fine tune this with endpoints. We can go ahead and do that since we're on this side and we'll just get both sides adjusted. So we're just popping that off and we're gonna bring it up. I'm just gonna guesstimate it's a little bit lower than the front. 23, I'm at about 24 now. Go ahead and turn the whole thing around. And now we've got that reverse function going on. So car drops instead of going up, car drops. Sweet. Okay, with the car in this off position, I can kind of move these servos around however I want. So I'm gonna lift this up and just get these screws put in the rear. It's about having to take these rear wheels off. Okay, so now we've limited the travel of the servos and we've also positioned the servo horns so that the car sits in the correct position and uh, I've got it roughly going up and down the correct height. We want to go ahead and fine tune that at this point. And we're supposed to be 26 millimeters in the front and 23 millimeters in the rear. First, let's go ahead and work on the front together. Like I said, we just set the parameters at 20 and 20 to get us started. And at that point, we were able to attach the servo horn to the servos. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and check that out. So these are channel three and four, and they seem to be functioning pretty well. But what we're going to want to do is get our ruler out and get the height and everything that we've uh, established as what we want it to be. So if we remember the front was 16 millimeters in the low position and in the up position it was 26 millimeters. So let's go ahead and get our ruler out and check it. And right now we're about 27, 26, 27. So we're actually really very close in the up position. On this side, let's check it in the down position. We'll bring both sides down, and it was 16 at this point. Right now, we're at 20, right about 20, 21, maybe. We can adjust that by going to, you know, finding out which one of these this is. Moving this particular one, so this is channel three. So in the menu, we're going to go to channel three, and we can adjust the up parameter here and the down parameter here. So we're going to go ahead and take that number and lower it. Okay, not really doing anything. There we go. Now by raising that number, it's actually bringing the car down. Let's go to both down. Okay, actually that's, make sure both tires are down. That's That was the problem that I was having. You need to raise both of these up so that your tires are both in the down position and one's not holding the other one up. So the, we've got down to about 19 there. So let's keep on raising that number. That's definitely dropped it down about eight, 17, 18. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it about there at, at 42 and let's turn this thing around. And at this point, they're both in the, the down position. So we're gonna measure this point here and we're, we're well above 20. Let's go ahead and bring them up and check this as well. This is actually high on this side as well. So we wanted this at 26. So let's go ahead and adjust that first. Channel four. Let's see what we can do here. We want to bring it down. Okay, let's bring it down. We're still a little bit high. Starting to put quite a bit of pressure on that. So I'm gonna stop right there at eight and you heard that servo whining when I went below that. We don't want to do anything like that. Now let's go ahead and drop them back down so we've got the front down where we want it and check that measurement which is supposed to be about, I think we've got the other one down at about 18 or 22 or so. So now let's go ahead and raise that up and watch the car drop down. It's about 19. I think we'll go a little bit lower. So we'll raise that up to. See, that's starting to whine now. Pretty quiet at 49. Okay. Which is nice. So we'll just leave it there. So, right height. But yeah, check it out. We're in. 
complete lowest position right now with the switches up. We can bring the car up, up to ride height. We're going to go down into the mixes. We can go ahead and shut the car off at this point so we don't get any overheating going on or anything. And we're going to select the mixes. We've got four different mixes, okay? So what we're going to do is dedicate mix one and two to the rear of the car and three and four to the to the front of the car. So I've already programmed mix one and two. The master channel is five and the slave channel is six. I've adjusted the positive and negative mix to 100% and the offset to plus 50. The same, plus 50 on the offset, 100% on both the positive and negative. The master and the slave are, are the only two that are opposite. So on channel, on mix number one, we've got five and six, and on mix number two, we've got six and five, okay? That way they sort of counteract each other in the same manner. And we want to go ahead and turn both of them on, number one, and we're going to turn it on as well, and then we're going to go ahead and save that, okay? And now the rear of the car is going to function in unison. Both servos work together at the same time, no matter which switch you use. They always work together, so no side to side, no three wheel. Whichever one you got activated first is going to control them. So it just makes them function as one. So we've done the rear, and we're going to do the front the same way, so that they also function in that manner. So no more one at a time. They'll always function both together, regardless of which one we push. So let's go ahead and, and set that up here as well. So. So now we can just use one switch and the, on each and the car goes down, so up, down. Under sub trim here in the functions menu, uh, you can actually kind of set the center point of each servo. So you can actually use this to help you in setting the ride height as well. Um, you know, if your endpoint values get down to zero or, you know, you kind of want to balance your endpoint values out a little bit better, you can use this sub trim to center out the servo and then you can fine tune those endpoints from there as well. So the mod that we did today can be done in several different ways. Uh, we basically did it as though the car was completely stock, non-programmable servos and, uh, you know, everything has to be adjusted within the transmitter. And uh, if you do happen to have actually programmable servos, you can program those with your computer and set the values in there. And you can actually get a more accurate response from the servo itself by limiting the travel and the speed and multiple other factors inside of the uh, software. So you can stick with stock uh, servos. You can, you can upgrade if you'd like. Uh, you can up the voltage if you want, but there's really no need to do that with this setup because... It doesn't require a lot of power, and it's not about speed. It's more about, you know, a nice air release, so it looks like it's just sitting down to the ground.